Hey guys, Ben from MC Electrical back again with another video. This one we're going to go back to basics and look really simply at how much a solar system can save you. There's a lot of exaggeration out there in how much solar can save and also overestimations of how much solar systems can produce. But the real truth is solar doesn't need to be lied about. It's good enough without that. So in this video I'm going to use our newly launched calculator on the MC Electrical website just to try and show you exactly how much you can save but more importantly how the savings are calculated and how it all works. So let's get into it. Alrighty and here we are on the calculator now itself. Uh, you'll notice there's a few fields to put in here. Uh, the first one being the annual solar production in kilowatt hours. Basically how much your solar system should produce in one year. Now to be honest this is the most complicated section to understand. The rest is really straightforward it's just simply inputting data. So we're going to spend a bit of time on this one first. So, annual solar production. The best way to get it is simply from the solar company you're getting your quotes from. It's their job to issue you a solar report, much like this one, that shows you the direction of the panels based on what works well and also visually what you're happy with, taking into account the tilt, the direction, losses, all this data. Once they've got that, a report is printed out showing you basically everything you need to know, but the most important field here is the estimated performance. Now the number here for this particular case, which is 6.6 .6 kilowatts of Q-cell panels, the estimation is about 9,835 kilowatt hours a year. So that's the number we put into the calculator back here, 9,835. Now this is the first step of potential over-exaggeration. This number can easily be increased to make the solar savings look better. For instance, with NEMAP, the program we use for our estimations, you can adjust the system efficiency figure from 80% up all the way to 100, which in reality is just never going to happen. There are other methods as well. Uh, shouldn't, should the program NEMAP not be used, people can do it by hand or people can use other various software, but all of them can be adjusted to unrealistic solar figures. We actually had a case of a salesman at one time increasing this number to 97, something ridiculously high. He no longer works for us, moved over to Solar Edge, but that was a case of really exaggerating the figures to try and tell a better story than it was. But the truth is the story was already good to begin with, there was no need to do that. So if we look at other widely accepted methods to attain this annual solar production figure, we can refer to solar quotes and Finn Peacock's table here that he's done up for each capital city. Now how this table works is you multiply your system size, so be it in this case 6.6 .6 kilowatts, by the expected average sun hours of the city you're in. So for instance here in Brisbane we are at 4.2 kilowatt hours expected. So 6.6 .6 system size multiplied by 4.2 gives us 27.72 kilowatt hours a day. Projecting that to a year gives us 10,117 kilowatt hours. You'll notice that's relatively closely in line with our estimation here of 9,835. So to be honest with you, this is probably slightly conservative, but it's good to see that that's the case. We're not over exaggerating, we're slightly under if anything. And again, this number can change based on tilt of the panels, exact orientation, you know, so you could have some east and west. Most important just to make sure that any solar company you're going with really backs up what they're telling you and they are liable for their estimation figures. This is going to keep them honest and you know what you're up for in terms of savings. So moving back to our calculator, we've got 9,835. If you're not in the process of getting quotes, just change, just use that multiplier I showed you before of Finn Peacock's table here. So the next field we're interested in is the solar system cost. This is going to change depending on the level of quality you want to go for and what suits you best. So looking at our solar system pricing page, uh, we've, we scroll down and have a look. We've got a bronze range here. Potentially you want to go a little bit better quality, but don't want to go all the way to the upper Rolls-Royce ranges down here. So let's look at something solid mid-range here, 25-year product warranty Q-cell panels with a 10-year parts and labor fronies converter, 6.6 uh, .6 kilowatts of that being 7,690. Let's, let's put that data in. So 7,690. And then moving on down to the tariff prices, we've got tariff 11, which is pretty much what you pay for power. In Queensland that fluctuates between 20 cents to 32 cents, but let's meet in the middle and say something like 24. And then we've got feed-in tariff. So any generation from the solar that you're unable to use, maybe you're overproducing for what you need, 
someone else needs it. So that's gonna be sent back to the grid and the electricity companies are gonna give you some credits for it. Now that number in Queensland can vary from as low as six cents all the way up to 22, but let's meet somewhere in the middle and potentially look at 14 cents. You can get higher, but I really like to showcase for your argument's sake that solar makes a lot of sense even without expecting the best of the best. So with all that data entered, that's really all we need to understand how much you can save from solar. Now, after we've inputted this data, we get some fields down here, the maximum yearly savings and the minimum yearly savings. All this is doing is multiplying that 9,835 kilowatt hour cost by the best potential and the lowest potential. The best potential would be using every single ounce of that solar and therefore saving 24 cents for every kilowatt hour. So 24 cents multiplied by 9,835 gives us $2,360 a year. That's our upper limit and it's impossible to achieve. You just cannot use every ounce of the solar. It's not gonna happen. And then likewise, we've got our minimum yearly savings, which is again, the 9,835 kilowatt hour generation, multiplied by the worst thing you could do with the solar. That being sending it all back to the grid for a measly 14 cents for every kilowatt hour. So 14 cents multiplied by 9,835 gives us $1,377 for our lower end. Like the upper end, it's just never going to happen. You can't, it's impossible to not use something of the solar, whether that be lights, fridge, or some base load throughout the day. You definitely will be using some. From this, we know how much we can save at a maximum and how much we can save at a minimum. Taking into account that system cost of 7690 this therefore gives us a payback period of between 3.26 and 5.58 years. So really nice savings range, even in the worst case scenario. And I guess this is why Australia has a large solar uptake. It just makes a lot of financial sense. Now on to what I feel is the best part of the calculator, trying to refine that maximum and minimum range and understand it a little bit better. We have a solar self consumption bar here. So that is how much of the solar you're going to use directly and how much of the solar you're gonna send back to the grid. It's relatively impossible to know this off the bat. It's something that you just have to be mindful of. Now, what this field does is as we increase the solar self-consumption, you'll notice the average annual payback gets better and better. This is simply because it's better to use power for a saving of 24 cents than to send it back to the grid at 14. As we reduce our solar self-consumption, that payback period gets noticeably worse and worse. But even in really low cases of just 20% self-consumption, which is quite low, we're still under a five-year payback. The figure we like to use is a 50-50 split. You can get better, you can do worse, but with a 50-50 split, we're looking here at a 4.11 year payback, again, for a pretty high quality system. We can even modify a few of these fields, potentially say we want to go for a bit of a budget system here in SunGrow Q-Cells for 6,100 on our pricing page. Uh, this is gonna change the payback period to 3.26 years. So it's kind of interesting to see that by really upping the quality of the system, you're only looking at about 11 month extra payback. So hopefully with this calculator, you can change a lot of the data, fiddle with how much power you feel you can self consume, change system pricing and try and get it to a level that you're happy with, but most importantly, to understand it a bit better and how exactly solar is gonna save money for you. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Really appreciate you watching. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content. It helps us know we're on the right track, but also helps get this information out to other people looking for solar information. Thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.